Then we go to Kanosuke Takeshita and Darby Allen. My God, this match. Yo. So early on, Takeshita goes for a wheelbarrow and Darby flips over, landing on his feet and then takes this insane back body drop. Then things pick up as Darby does his insane tope suicida, but is met with a flying knee by Takeshita from the floor. Uh, this looked insane. insane. So Takeshita takes him up the ramp and does multiple rotations into like uh, a chaos, chaos theory. theory on the ramp. It, this was just crazy. We go to the picture in picture and Darby rolls to the floor, avoiding the running knee strike. So Takeshita on the floor runs at him, crashes his knee into the guardrail and he's selling the knee. He did a phenomenal job selling this knee for the rest mm -hmm. of the match. Don Callis is checking on him from the broadcast area and Darby hits a coffin drop to Takeshita on the floor. Takeshita beats the count at nine right into a code red that he kicks out from. Darby goes for another coffin drop landing on Takeshita's knees, which include the injured one. So he's continuing to limp and he's trying to get around, hits multiple suplexes to Darby and Darby just fires back with a crucifix bomb. Callis yells kill at Takeshita who runs his boot into the face of Darby and then executes a German suplex off the top turnbuckle to Darby. And from there, Darby is just waving on more and he's about to die when Takeshita gives him his wish, blasts him with the knee and wins in 12 minutes and 50 seconds. Match of the year Takeshita so far. <laughs> so far, yeah, I would say so. I mean, um, actually, I guess I you know what? This would be on par with some of the the Noah matches, but um, anyway, this would be a, this would be a can't <laughs> can't, even, can't even call it a match of the year. One yeah, I, I can't actually. I did see some pretty good <laughs> matches yesterday. Uh, maybe best TV match of the year, best AEW best match, TV of, match, match of, the of the year. Okay. Easy, yeah. All right, all right. This match was insane. I knew it would be great, but I was not prepared for uh, 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 this 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 sort of quality on the first show of the year. This felt to me very much like a modern version of Mike Awesome versus uh, Masato Tanaka except the Japanese guy is the big man here. And um, the moves were just as spectacular. And, and it had a bit more psychology than maybe, you know, some of those matches, but a ton of creativity. And I think what, what is the signature of those matches uh, that this one has in common? Complete fearlessness in execution of whatever crazy shit that these two had planned. One guy just able to throw the other at will and the smaller guy just taking a crazy amount of punishment but refusing to ever give up. It was by far the most heelish I felt to Keshida throughout this entire run. It was the the the, the match where I, I felt he most effectively used his size as a heel as well. I just want to see a bigger program with these two on a bigger stage. Their chemistry was was really off the charts here. Yeah, and it's going to get followed up because later they're in the back with the Don Callis family and Takeshita cuts a promo in Japanese. Callis says next week they go back to Daly's place and issues a challenge for Darby to bring Sting and his 25-0 record to take on Takeshita and Hobbs and they will make it 25-1. and So later in the night, they said that uh, Sting and Darby have accepted the challenge and they'll also be appearing on Collision Saturday, which is noteworthy of having Sting in Charlotte for the last time. Yeah, interesting. Wow. That's a so big we're getting deal. This tag match next week. I just came out of this. I agree with you, Way. I think you could definitely revisit Takeshita and Darby. But man, if this is not like the audition for Takeshita to be a significant heel in 2024. But again, there's just there's so many names and so few spots that you have. But man, mm -hmm. and Takeshita, this guy is just he was outstanding here and he had a phenomenal opponent in Darby to be with, but this was just a tremendous TV match. To to it to Sean in a, in a different way than, than he did in previous matches. Cause I don't know if I've ever really seen him as this giant, you know, against a smaller man who bumps the way Darby has. And, and it just, to me, unlocks something different about Takeshita. Um, that, that really, to me, made it feel like he could be a main event you know top player i mean he he felt that way before but as an underdog i think that's that's almost just a different role um than than what what is available right now in AEW. Uh, but as a big man monster with don Callis by his side like th there's a lot of potential there but then will hobbs is also that guy too so there's a lot of big people in in the Callis uh family taz had some funny lines on this show i mean at one point callus is talking about how 
you know, the, he wants big guys and like six three and above, which, which felt like one of those like WWE edicts they went through when. when How tall is Will Osprey? Um, well, he's he's not five foot eight, which is what Taz noted he was, and he was stating, uh, "What about me? I was five foot eight. Are you saying that uh, people need to be six foot three? And Callus just pauses. Well, ideally, that's what you want to be, but you were a, but you were special, Taz. <laughs> You didn't want to like heal on Taz, but uh, they continue. <laughs>